When we have a steel column, normally we design the anchor rods to resist the reactions, tension, and uh, shear. Normally when the shear is uh, small, this approach is okay, but what happens with the horizontal reaction is larger. That would be very difficult to be resisted by the anchor rods only. So what do we do in those cases? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design completely from scratch a design example of a shear lock using as the steel software. Let's get started. This is the statement of the example. We have a pedestal 24 by 24 and a base plate 17 by 17 that supports a steel column. Then we have some anchor rods. The loads are in vertical. We have uh, 40 kips in there, 20 kips live. But we have also lateral load, but due, due to wind, 50 kips. And this is exactly uh, the issue here, because this large reaction could be very difficult to be resisted just with the anchor rods. So in this case, we're going to design a shear log just to resist this horizontal reaction. A shear log is a steel member welded to the underside of the base plate. Typically, it's a plate, uh, vertically, that uh, will be working in bearing against the concrete and resisting the, the shear uh, forces. Let's get started. When we create a calculation in ASIP steel for a base plate, this is the template. Basically, here we enter all the information at the left, and we see the results at the right. So we're going to start with uh, the information that we already know. We know that the base plate is 17 by 17, and uh, the pedestal is 24 by 24. So we need to change here to 12 and 12, because it's concentric, and 12 and 12. Actually, we can see graphically what we are doing. We go, we go here. We go here, and we can see uh, the dimension that we are entering. So we have a base plate 17 by 17 and a pedestal 24 by 24 that supports a steel column W10 by 45. This is how this looks in this example. In addition, we have a, a grout under the base plate, one and a half inches. Okay. The materials, we have a concrete for the pedestal, 3 KSI, and FY for the rebars, 60. We have here the anchor rod, but in this example we don't use them. We, we, we're going to focus on the on the shear load. So let's enter the uh, the loads in this case. We know that the dead is 40 and live is 20 and wind is 50. Let's enter that. Let's go to the nominal loads so that we have the load the load cases. We know that the uh, gravity load is 40 kips in dead and 20 kips in life. And we have also a wind, wind shear, so we need to go to the horizontal load here, 50 kips. So we have entered all the information that we were given. We're going to uh, design per LRFD in this, in this uh, example, just for illustration purposes. So if we go to at a glance tab, we can see here that if we use just anchor rods, the design will fail, obviously, because the shear load is, is pretty high. Just the shear is, you know, the ratio is 228. So we need to find another solution. And the solution is probably using a shear load. So we have here in the anchorage tab, we have the tension analysis, but in this case, we don't use it. We are not designing the anchor rods. We're going to go to the shear analysis. In this case, we have three options. One option is friction only. Second option is shear log plus friction. It's a combination of both. And the third option is anchor rods only. We know that for that, you know for this kind of load, 50 kips, anchor rods only wouldn't work. So we're going we're gonna to try to use a, a shear log. In this case, just with the default uh, values for, for the shear log, you know, the, the design ratio is, is, is high, so it's failing. So we need to adjust 
the numbers here. When we design a shear lock, the grout under the plate is ineffective to transfer the shear, is completely ignored. So only the portion that is below the grout is effective to transfer the bearing against the concrete. If we go to the condens tab at the bottom, we can see here the complete analysis for shear. We know that the combination, the controlling combination is 0.9 dead plus wind. And this is obvious because uh, since you know the solution in, in, includes the friction and the friction depends on the vertical load, the less vertical load will be the controlling combination. So this is a controlling combination for, for uh, uh, shear locks and, and friction. We have 50 kips in shear, but the compression force is 36 is due, you know, the combination is 0.9 dead and we saw that the dead is 40 plus 20 or 40 because we are using just the dead 40 times 0.9 is 36. If we specify a friction coefficient of 0.5 between the plate and the concrete, then the friction force is uh, the compression force times the friction coefficient times the fee, because we are uh, designing in LRFD. And uh, the shear log needs to be designed for the remaining portion of the, uh, of, of the shear, which is 50 minus 13.5 is 36.5 kits. So this is the load that will be used to design the, the shear log. To design the shear log, we need to check four failure modes, steel bending, then steel shear, the weld capacity, and then the concrete bearing and the concrete breakout. In this case, the bending is controlling. The design ratio is 141, but also the weld is failing, 118. So the first thing that we need to do is to define the shear log height. The default value is 6 inches, but we can reduce that probably to 5. The concrete bearing ratio is 0 0.31, so we have uh, some room to play there. Maybe we can uh, reduce it a little bit more, maybe maybe 4 inches deep, and the bearing is still okay, is 0.48. Remember that from this height, 4 inches, we need to deduct the thickness of the grout. The grout is 1.5, so the effective depth using the calculations for the shear log is two and a half inches in this case. And uh, with that dimension, the, the bearing is okay. Now we need to deal with the uh, steel bending. The lock thickness is one inch. We need to increase that in, in, in increments of quarter of an inch. So let's use 1.25 thick shear lock. And now it's okay in bending. Now the controlling mode is breakout 0.73, which is more than 0.66. This is not good because we don't want to control the uh, breakout. We need to avoid that. So what we need to do is to reduce the width of the log. Instead of 12 inches, probably 11. The steel breakout is larger than, than bending, so we need to reduce a little bit more, maybe 10 inches wide. And E79, okay. Now flexure is more than, than, than breakout. But we have a problem with the welding. And the problem is that the weld, the weld size is quarter of an inch, but uh, the shear log thickness is inch and a quarter. So the minimum is 5 16 point thirty one seventy five. So now the weld size is okay, that complies with the minimum by, by AISC. Another flexure is controlling over the breakout, which is what we wanted. Graphically, we can go to the shear breakout here. This is a plan view where we can see the shear log and the base plate. And uh, the breakout area that is developed uh, in, in the concrete. This is a 45 degree area from the border of the shear log in plan and in elevation is also 45 degrees 
but in this elevation we need to deduct the area of the shear log itself. The program calculates the breakout area directly, it's 308 square inches. For concentric symmetric pedestals, this is quite easy to calculate, but for narrow or uh, irregular uh, or uh, not, not symmetrical supports, that would be more complicated to calculate. So this is one of the features in ASIP still, you can calculate the breakout area very, very quickly. Let's go back to the calculation. So the controlling uh, uh, failure mode is uh, the steel flexure and the ratio is 0.79, which is okay, it's less than 1.0 and the design is, is correct. If we go to the detail tab, you scroll down, there's a section that is Anchorage design with all the calculations step by step. Basically, this is a report, three pages with all the uh, graphics all the images that illustrate uh, the calculations. If we go to the detailed report as well, this is a report generated by the program, and we can see all the pages there, four, actually it's six pages, with all the images as well. Thank you very much for your attention. You are invited to subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future with uh, engineering topics like this one. Thank you for your attention.